First of all, Shemma, congratulations. Um, interesting week for you. Yeah, really interesting week. Uh, thank you very much, Richard. Um, that's, that's really good of you. Yeah, it's been a, a big week. Um, so a, a week with mixed feelings, really, when it's been announced that I'll be leaving Cumbria um, in the summer to take up a, a new post working for the Archbishops of Canterbury and York. So Yes, uh, sad to be leaving, and uh, but also excited about the opportunities and the new post. Mm. I mean, it kind of been easy to sort of decide what you wanted to do because I mean, you know, there's, there's so much going on here in Cumbria. You've been so much involved in the God for All vision, but there again, the exciting things about the, the new role as well. You know, how do you discern where God wants you to be when you get a decision like this? That. I think that's a million dollar question, isn't it, really, for all Christians? I mean, yes, it's very much a journey that I've had to go through over the last few weeks. How do you hear the voice of God? But I think that's a question that we all need to answer. You know, we all need to hear the voice of God um, in, in all of our lives. I mean, for me, the way I the way I discern is through prayer, uh, through spending time alone with God, through talking with others, actually. And I, I think it was mainly that. Um, talking it through with with friends both here and nationally um, to realize that that this was the right next step um, and and just responding really to that that sense of of call and it, as you say it is difficult because you're trying to you know it, there is so much to do here and I, I have loved being here and I particularly loved working on the vision refresh that I know last time we chatted it was all about that and I just think God is maybe giving asking me to go and take some of what I've learned here actually and what I've learned through doing the vision refresh in Cumbria and help that to happen in the Church of England more generally and more widely and and so so I, I discerned that it was right to say yes to that but it, it's definitely been a journey. Tell me more about the the role because it is a new role that you're going into isn't it? Yes, it, it is a new role. It's building on the role of um, Bishop at Lambeth that um, Tim Thornton has been taking up to now, but he's retiring in September. And I think both archbishops see it as an opportunity to bring their two offices closer together, really, to begin to work um, across the, the provinces of Canterbury and York a bit more. Um, so I, I will be based at Lambeth Palace and I will be sort of directly involved with the team there, but also working closely with the team at Bishopthorpe um, and really um, helping to forward some of the stuff in the vision and the strategy of the Church of England at the moment to help to take that on the next steps, a bit like we've been doing here at Cumbria. Um, it'll be supporting the ministries of the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Archbishop of York. Um, and it'll be liaising closely with, with all of the bishops in the Church of England. So the College of Bishops, the House of Bishops, the General Synod. And really my role will be there to, to listen, to support, um, to help those ministries to, um, to, to operate well. A lot of spheres of society have sort of a north-south divide when it comes to the UK. Uh, the church is no exception. How easy do you think it's going to be to sort of pull the north and the south closer together? Well, I think this role in itself um, signals a desire to do that, which is a really good start. So um, I anticipate quite a lot of time up and down the M1 or on the um, East Coast main line um, between York and, and Lambeth Palace. So I, I want to physically be in the north um, quite a bit as much as I can manage it. And I think coming as I am out from being Bishop of Penrith and having been in the Northwest for the last uh, two and a bit years, um, just gives me that sense of, you know, knowing some of what's going on in the North and what the particular challenges are for the North. And so I, I really hope to be able to sort of embody a bit of that um, breaking down of the North, North South divide that's, that's really necessary. Yeah. You're also going to be heavily involved in the, the Lambeth Conference, that's uh, the delayed Lambeth Conference, we should say, that's taking place next year. Um, that must be a, a privilege and an honour as well. It, it hugely is. I mean, it's just such a blessing. So I, I've been involved with that um, for a few years. I'm now chairing the working group that's putting that whole process together, and, and that will continue to be a big part of my role. Yes, as you say, the in-person conference is um, delayed till 20, summer 2022, but that's really opened up a gift of time. So over the next 
uh, well, year or so, it's given us an opportunity to begin to work with the bishops from around the Anglican communion and get them together um, like you and I are talking together now on Zoom, as we've all become so familiar with, which has just opened up a new tool for us, really, as a way of hosting conversations. So starting from July, there's going to be a series of, we're just calling them Bishop's Conversations, you know, kind of does what it says on the tin. So that will be smaller groups of bishops, around 20, mixed up from all around the communion, getting together to chat together, to pray together together to hear um, each other's stories, to hear what the context is on the ground. I mean, particularly as we come out of COVID, I think just the opportunity for bishops from India to meet with bishops from America, to meet with bishops from Africa, from the UK, and just say, you know, how is it for you? What's God doing in your patch? What are the challenges for you? So that, that's going to be a really exciting period over the next year and then the, the conference itself in 2022. So I, I'm hugely blessed by that piece of my work I just uh, I love it it's great to meet people from all around the world and and encourage that global conversation. In relative terms it's been a short time that you've been with us here in Cumbria what what do you think you'll take with you from from your time here that'll sort of see you into the next stage of your ministry? Oh I will take so much Richard I will uh, Cumbria just gets in your heart very quickly Um, I, I I know that you have to have basically lived here for generations to be considered Cumbrian, but I I hope a very small part of me might be considered Cumbrian because um, I have loved my time here. I really have. I have. I love the people. I mean, it's the people that make Cumbria. It, it's just that. It's just that warmth. It's that friendliness. It's the fact that you can't walk down the street without saying hello to people um that everyone becomes your friend and I have no doubt that the streets of London are going to be slightly different to that and if I try and go around saying hello to every person I meet um people might look a bit weirdly at me but I that's one of the things I will take with me I I will take with me um the encouragement of the church in Cumbria it's it's not an easy context to be church and it's not an easy time to be the church and there are many challenges facing us I mean particularly coming out of the pandemic but I think I have seen just a real sense of creativity of determination of um, local local care really I mean people Christians churches in Cumbria are embedded in their communities and really care about the communities. And I don't think that's the case everywhere around the country. So I've learned from that and I'll I'll be taking that with me. Um, The way in which people have caught a vision for the refreshed vision, you know, our our vision to follow daily, speak boldly, care deeply, tread gently, um, that has inspired me. That's a vision that's come from the people and um, that's been amazing. And I, I will take that with me. I think it's probably copyright um, County of Cumbria. Otherwise you might see it emerging on a wider Church of England canvas. Um, and and just the creativity that there is here, you know, the, the fresh expressions of church, the way people are willing to try something new often and to get outside the walls of the church and engage where people are in their local communities. So so all of that, and that's before I even begin to mention the the hills and the lakes and the fells and the natural beauty, which is is so evident here. And any advice that you might like to give to somebody who possibly would succeed you in the role of Bishop of Penrith? Oh, I would say grab it with both hands (laughs) (laughs) if it's offered to you. Um, I, I would say this is a wonderful place it's an exciting time um to to be in Cumbria I mean that there, there are big challenges for us as a church we the um there is going to be a need to to do things differently there's going to be a need to really look at the way we are church together and you know we're, we're probably not going to be able to afford as much as we have done in the past in terms of paid ministry in terms of church buildings you know so we're just going to have to get creative and everybody's going to have to play their part so lay lay people non-ordained people are going to have to step up and take leadership which they should do because they are the people of God Um, we we will need to have more ministers who are probably working in other spheres um, like yourself uh, as well as being ordained um, and bringing those two together so I you know I would just say it's a time to embrace um, 
a real richness of, of who we are as a church. So anybody coming into this context will be greatly blessed.